three players out. Yep. We'll go over it again. Um, okay. Are you pissed off? <laughs> um, no, because we're well aware of scheduling uh, well before the season gets underway. Uh, I know there's been a lot of talk of it. But we've known all along that should we be fortunate enough to make finals, that um, you know if some players are selected to represent their country, uh, then so be it. And, and that's why we have squads. So we've got a squad of 18, and um, that's why we spend a lot of time uh, going over and, and trying to put together the best possible squad we can for any absences. Um, you know, part of our goal here is to help players, you know, get out there and perform and achieve their goals and dreams of representing their country. Um, you know. Said we can't control the scheduling. We just work out, work out um, yep. our best way through it. Does it go too long? Could it finish last weekend? The oh, look, look, that's for other people to make comment on that. Uh, we're just focusing on what we need to do and uh, and prepare. As I said, we've known the schedule uh, all along, so you know certainly no no issues from from my end. Um, you know, we, we certainly feel that we've got the players uh, to to go out there and, and perform well for the Adelaide Strikers uh, Friday night. I guess you'll have a feel of who comes in for those guys now. Are you confident with the depth in, in your squad? Yeah, very confident with the depth. You know, we've got some fantastic players uh, representing the Adelaide Strikers, and uh, look, whoever uh, gets the opportunity to play, uh, you know, we're fully confident they'll be able to do a fine job. And all the lads have been preparing well. You know, nothing will change in that sense. You know, we've been we've been very consistent with our preparation. The lads have put in all the work throughout the season, and uh, you know, we'll just continue to do our prep as best we can uh, leading up to Friday. Cameron, Cameron, White, sorry, Cameron White said... Cameron White said he hoped... Yeah, I'll do whatever you want, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Cameron White said he hopes the, the loss of the three players unsettles the side. Do you feel unsettled at all? No, we're not the only side that struggles with uh, or, or has had issues with the uh, player and not being available. I mean, you look at Perth Scorchers, I think they've had, you know, at one point they had eight or nine pl first choice players out. So, uh, and, and every team has had that, you know. Um, so th there's no issues there at all. Um, we just, we know we've got a very, uh, very good squad. We're very confident that uh, whoever comes in can do a fine job. Is it a bit of a blow though, Diz? I mean, ideally you look at it on paper and head carry. And Stan Lake, I mean, they're obviously first choices in the side. Is it a blow at all? Look, I think every side would like to have all their players available, you know, all 18 players available, but we don't. And uh, that, that's the nature of the, uh, of the way the tournament's set out. Uh, we understand that and we, we're, we're fully prepared to uh, handle whatever's thrown at us. And, um, you know, we're just, I'm just very excited for the lads that had the opportunity to represent the strikers um, Friday night. You know, it's, it's a great opportunity for them. To, uh, to put on a show in front of uh, our fans who you know, we believe are the best fans in the league. Perth, do you, uh, sorry, do you have a preference who you want to see get up tomorrow night between Perth and Hobart? No, I don't. I, we're just focused on our game and uh, whatever happens. I mean, it'd be brilliant if we were fortunate enough to win here to be able to have a home final, but that's completely out of our control. All, all we can control is the game Friday night and how we go about our game. So very, very big holes to fill. The, the, I mean, the squad depth, you think it's enough to... To to, no, to cover for Kerry and, and Head? Yeah, for the fourth time, yes. <laughs> uh, we're very confident that our, our squad depth, as I've said a number of times, we've got very good squad. Uh, we've got 18 players on our list. Uh, we've uh, brought in um, Harry Nielsen uh, to cover for Alex Carey. So we're very confident that our, uh, our squad can do the job. Is there any extra pressure to deliver in the final? Because you haven't made the decider. You finished on top you know, two years ago and the three years ago. Last year you were sixth, I think it was. But you know, is there any extra pressure now to finally win a semi and get in the decider? Uh, pressure's in the mind. So um, look, we're just focused on our game and what we do and what we can control. Uh, we can't control other people's expectations. And uh, what we can do is control what we do in our preparation. And then when we get out on the park, when the decision making, uh, when, with lads with bat and ball in hand. What does it mean? What would it mean to you then to finally get over the hump and make the make the final? Oh, it'd be fantastic for the lads to do that. But uh, as I said, we've got process to go through, and we've got to get through our, our, at that game. And, and that game's going to be very tough. The Melbourne Renegades are a fine side. You know, we understand that. There are a lot of match winning players. We know we have to play at our very best to compete with them. Is the lead up any different? Is the approach, the training? Meetings, anything any different oh, leading into a final? We, we have our, we've been very consistent with that and we just continue to um, to prepare as well as we can. Because all you can do is all you can do. You can't do any more. And so we'll be doing everything we can to best prepare. And uh, we'll go out there and uh, with, uh, with clear minds and let's just go out there and enjoy themselves and, and embrace the whole uh, the whole night. It'd no, be great. No Brad Hodge, pretty handy? 
Brad Hodge is a fine player, absolutely, and you know, with, uh, hopefully he recovers, you know, uh, well soon. You know, that was a, a nasty thing having appendicitis. So look, we wish Hodge all the best and and hope he he gets over that really quick. It's always exciting, I suppose, when the. Uh both teams are playing in a final and you know finishing the year pretty strongly. How do you feel about uh, the women's team chances ahead of this week? Yeah, obviously uh, feeling confident about it and it's fantastic that we've ended up with a final here in front of the boys and uh, terrific that Crete Australia made that call even though we finished fourth. So um, it helps to raise the profile of the female game and I think it's great for the fans to be able to come in. Hopefully they get in early and start cheering loud for us and got their voices ready for the guys. Did you, at the start of the year, did you expect to be where you are now? Well, certainly I wanted um, us to make the finals. So that was put on the table from the first training session. So, And the girls have uh, certainly done well, I think. We had a bit of a hiccup on the weekend in Sydney, but obviously we have to turn that around Friday afternoon. And are there some, is it better going in from fourth, say, than first sometimes without that expectation of being the minor premier? Do you feel like you've got nothing to lose to some degree? Not really. I think when you get to finals, it doesn't matter ha who, where you finished. It's, it's a 50-50 game, and you, you've got there. So, that's a, it's a first for us. So it's something new for the girls to um, take in. But um, yeah, I think it's anyone's game from here. So whoever plays the best on the day, obviously, is going to um, be there on Sunday. A, a few comments have been made about standalone finals. What, what's, what's your view on a standalone final for women? Well, certainly that's something that we will push for in the future. But I think it's great that we get the opportunity at the moment to play in front of the boys. And for us, the excitement of um, you know both teams being in the final, I think that's that's special in itself. So the Sydney teams might not agree with that, but um, yeah, we don't really care too much for what they're <laughs> thinking. So uh, I think for the for the Perth Scorchers who have got this, a similar experience, I think it's fantastic. But obviously, in the future, we want the game to. Uh, stand by itself and for the fans to come in and, and watch us and go home, not worry about whether the boys are playing or not. There's some talk that could be next year, uh, sort of the window in October, November for a standalone pop. Is it ready for that, to, to take that window? Yeah, I think if you look at the um, audiences that we've had and the, the viewing on the TV and the live streaming, I think the, the, the interest is growing and growing all the time. So I think actually the, the female games um, getting more into it, well, they're, they're increasing with the number of viewers and the boys are falling off a bit so I think that's a sign <laughs> not that we're going in front of you but um, you know just stay tuned we'll get there um, so yeah I think obviously in the future whether that's next season or three seasons time I, I don't really know that's for Creed Australia to make those decisions and Jason also some talk that you don't look straight ahead <laughs> okay sorry BBL going to a full home and away series which would make it the same length as the IPL do you think that is feasible Oh, look, look, that's decisions uh, for um, administrators to make, Cricket Australia. Um, look, I, I think the tournament's fantastic. Um, you know, can we play more games? Look, that, that's up to um, Cricket Australia to decide. Um, but I, I think I think everyone agrees it probably wouldn't want to go the length of the IPL. That's, I think the IPL's nearly two and a half months or something like that. That's a long time for a, um, a domestic tournament. Um, let alone a T20 tournament, but look, that's look, that's for the administrators to decide. Can I just ask about Harry Nielsen's form coming mm. into, the, into the game? How, how, how are you feeling about him? Oh, it's good that someone's asking about Harry. Yeah, um, look, it's fantastic. Uh, look, we're delighted to be able to offer Harry that opportunity. Um, you know, he, he's performed well uh, at, at club level, at second team level. He's played for the Cricket Australia eleven. Um, you know, the, uh, late last year. Um, so look, he, he's got some real form behind him. And, which is fantastic, and look, we're, as I said, we're absolutely delighted about offer young Harry the opportunity. Um, not every day, I suppose, you make your debut in a BBL semi-final, but look, he's a you know he's, he's a mature head on young shoulders, and you know, I'm sure he'll uh, he'll handle that um, very well. What about the other guys? Do you how they handle the pressure of? Yeah, you know, I mean, you might have one game for the year, and it turns out that it's a semi-final where your whole season yeah. hinges on it. Yeah, it's look, it's obviously a challenge for for anyone, and but. You know, we, we back our system, we back uh, our preparation, and, and that's all you can do. You know, as, as I said before, mate, you can't do any more than all you can. And so we just prepare as well as we can. We research our opposition as well as we can. And then we make sure that we're really clear with what our plans are, and then just go out there and you know, with a clear mind and go and play and enjoy the game. And, uh, and what will happen will happen, but you know, we've got to trust that and believe that process. So so, Andrew, I was just going to say, if you were Sydney, would you be a bit miffed you weren't getting the home final? 
Well, they, they knew from yeah. the start that they uh, weren't going to play at home, so because the Sydney male teams weren't in featuring in the final, so maybe they're disappointed that they're not playing in Perth. But you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is, and I guess they've just got to deal with it. Um, just on Harry Nelson, does it make you feel a bit old, dear? Because you would have known him since a baby, and you played with his dad, and now he's uh, playing under your tutelage. Thanks, George. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, look, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, look, look, we're all getting older, I suppose, but to, to see a young guy like Harry, who, who's you know come through age groups and worked incredibly hard at his game, um, to have this opportunity is just fantastic. And uh, but yeah, in the end, yeah, I feel old. Yeah. <laughs>